everybody, how you doing today? Tell you, we're in some really strange times right now, aren't we? But, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about fishing, okay? Um, today's video is going to be about the telescopic fishing rod. And are they any good and should I use them? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I've got three of them. <laughs> That's right. Um, I like collecting fishing rods, all different types of fishing rods, and um, I've acquired a couple of them over the years. Uh, this particular one is a 6.6 six, uh, spinning rod. Uh, it's got five telescopic sections to it. And I have one that's also for a casting rod, and I have another one which uh, is also for a spinning rod, which is an 8-foot rod. But what I wanted to talk to you about was some of the pros and cons on using a uh, telescopic fishing rod. Now, before I start, I want to tell you this. There is nothing wrong with using one of these if this is all you can manage. Now, of course, professional anglers aren't going to use them. You know, serious anglers aren't going to use them. But if you're an occasional recreational angler, there is nothing wrong with using a telescopic fishing rod. I always keep one or two in the back of my car during the soft water season. I can't always keep my conventional fishing rods in the car. I just don't have the room for the length and sometimes not very convenient. So I always keep these and you never know for a little bit of impromptu fishing on the way home from work. They're also great to put in knapsacks if you go hiking and you come across somewhere where you'd like to fish. And also great to put in survival kits as well because they will work. So what's the problem with them? Well, let's... First off, they're telescopic. Which means the blank is in sections that, you know, telescope down inside the other. All right, telescopic, of course. A lot of people will tell you that that does interfere with the sensitivity and the action of the fishing rod. And yes, it will have some effect, definitely will have some effect on the sensitivity and the action of the fishing rod, unlike your conventional two-piece or one-piece. The best fishing rod to have is a one-piece fishing rod. Ultimate, you know, sensitivity and action are in a one-piece. But yes, it will compromise it to some degree because you've got five, four or five or three different sections instead of just two or one. But one of the biggest problems I have discovered about using a telescopic fishing rod is this. Pretend this is a full-size standard spinning rod. Now I want you to look the line guides, the line, I don't know if you can see that, how the line fits through the line guides here. And the line guides serve a very specific function and that is to help the angler control and manage their fishing line. Now usually on a conventional fishing rod you will have probably one line guide to every 10 inches, uh, 8 to 10 inches on the blank. So if you've got a 7 foot fishing rod you will probably have 9 to 10 uh, line guides on that fishing rod. You'll find more at the tip. They're closer together. That's to help control the line. But it also helps take the strain and pressure off the line when your blank is being bent due to a surging fish, that pressure that's being placed. Now notice when I do that, the line curves. It cooperates with the blank of the fishing rod because the line guides support the line. With telescopic fishing rods what happens is that you will usually have l uh, the less number of line guides on the blank because you have the telescopic sections. So what happens is the line instead of cooperating going around with the blank it goes straight across from one line guide to another. So you have this. I'm going to show you a clip of a video that I did about two years ago where I'm actually reeling in a, a gill 
not much bigger than my hand and I'll show you how the line literally goes straight from one line guide to another. It doesn't cooperate with the blank and bend with the blank because there's not as many line guides to control. So let's just take a quick look at that clip, okay? So here we are and like I say, I'm literally just bringing in a relatively hand-sized uh, bluegill. Now, gills are notorious fighters when they're hooked. They will thrash and swim around. They, they go nuts. But look at the bend. Look at how the line goes from one line guide to another. I'm using the, that same telescopic uh, spinning rod that I just showed you. Look how the line goes from literally across from one line guide to the other. It's just straight across. It doesn't bend or curve with the blank. And what happens then is that you're putting a lot of stress on your fishing line. Now, if you're one of these people that don't change out your fishing line and you're, you're still fishing with the line you put on four years ago, you're going to have a problem because the strain and stress put onto the line because of the lack of guides is going to cause that line to break. Yes, monofilament deteriorates. After a while, it dries up, it loses its elasticity, it becomes brittle, and it will snap. And that is why monofilament should be changed out on a very regular basis if you're doing a lot of fishing. So if you're one of those, you want to keep that in mind, that you may want to change out the line and have fresh line if you're going to use a telescopic fishing rod. Now, I usually run between a four to eight pound test fishing line when I'm fishing. I don't need to go over that for the type of fishing I do. And most recreational anglers usually stick around a six pound test. I have found that when I'm using the telescopic line um, poles, I will go to probably um, a test weight above what I normally would use for pan fishing. I would usually use a four to six pound test. I like to go to an eight pound test, fresh line, just to ensure that I have a good line that's going to stretch when there's pressure on the line itself so it, that it won't break. So that's important to think about when you're using a telescopic line. Now another thing to think about too, and I don't know if you remember the pen rods, the little fishing rods at the size of pens that were quite the fad a few years ago. Uh, those fishing rod blanks were quite capable of getting fairly large fish. Matter of fact, there was a ton of YouTube videos that came out and spoke on yeah, showing uh, anglers catching 13 pound carp, eight pound bass, and having no issues with the fishing rod blank. And it only had maybe two, three, maybe four, I think three line guides tops was on the blank of that fishing rod. So there was a lot of strain on that fishing line. But one thing the manufacturer told you in their specs to do was use the drag system in your fishing reel to your advantage. That's right. So when you've got less line guides on your fishing rod blank, you want to use the drag system more in your fishing reel. And that is simply when the fish runs, you let it run and you alter it, to tighten it up to bring it back in so that you tire that fish out and eventually you'll be able to land it. You don't simply tighten it hard over to the point where it won't tighten anymore and then start cranking on it because that will end up breaking your fishing line. Well, in most cases, it's going to break your fishing line, but certainly will when you're using a telescopic fishing rod that has less line guides than a conventional fishing rod. All right. So just keep that in mind. Fresh line. You may want to try going up a, a test weight and also use the drag system in your drag reel, that's what it's there for, in your fishing reel I should say, that's what it's there for, to help you fight that surging fish. And you'll find that these work actually very well. Okay, so that's my video for today. I hope everybody is keeping well. Remember, stay inside until this whole thing's over with, okay, and then we'll get fishing. All right, it'll happen. So until the next time, guys, stay well, stay happy, stay home. Bye for now.